All I want in life is a little bit of coffee. <laughs> She's a nightmare. Okay. Are, are you ready? I'm ready. Are we ready? <laughs> are we all ready? Is everybody ready? Because I'm ready now. Okay. <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> Hello, you guys, and welcome to our Halloween episode of The Sip. I'm so very excited. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by Lizzie Gordon. And this has been such a journey getting to today. <laughs> and I mean that so wholeheartedly. If you're listening on audio, I encourage you to watch today's episode on YouTube at The Sip Clips. Subscribe hit the bell so that you never miss a video. But we did go, in my opinion, all out for Halloween. I think we hit this pretty hard. <laughs> like, I've never... I've felt myself in a costume before, but, like, I'm feeling this. Like, this might be who she is. Well, do you want to explain what you are and how you got here? I'm a blue troll. <laughs> and from the troll movie or like no. what's the origin of a troll the origin of the troll movie is the troll that i am it's a toy it's a toy that was huge like in the 80s and early 90s but they're all like nude dudes with little gemstone belly buttons and crazy hair and that's who i am inside i do love the hairdo and it's reminding me slightly of march simpson <laughs> oh, no no it's different it's wild it's you're crazy your bedazzled jewel is definitely my favorite though this belly button like i'm not even joking this is top I would say this is one of my top three favorite costumes I've ever had. Well, it was sparkling in the doorway. Yeah, it's like a little disco she ball. She literally belly. was mem mesmerized for a minute and a half just being like, should we do Molly? Is <laughs> I mean, obviously <laughs> Should I kidding. relax? Is it over? <laughs> Did I go out for a troll tummy? <laughs> and I, of course, of course, like, <laughs> Duh. if you're watching, you probably still have no idea what I am. But in case you're wondering, I'm an OnlyFans star. <laughs> <laughs> obviously he, here's the thing with me and I, I hope everyone that has watched me for years appreciates the effort because every time <laughs> i've ever become a woman i've never shaved my chest well normally when i put on a wig and play a woman character whatever that may be everyone's very <laughs> bothered that i don't fully commit and shave myself yeah and the thing with me is it. I'm a hairy person. Yes. Like there's mounds and mounds of hair it's on my a body. It's forest. It's been growing for years. <laughs> and I was not only afraid to shave it, but I thought I might look a little thicker. You, know, you just never no, know what's under look, there. You look so toned. It's adorable. And this body glitter I'm living for. And I'm wondering if we should pierce your belly button. The Kim K body glitter. This is the Kim K body glitter? Of course. Yes. God. Mixed with some of the Fenty. I did a some splash Fenty. of both. You know? <laughs> But I am the type of person for Halloween in my entire adult life, I've never been able to commit to a costume. Oh, yeah? Because I never think anything's good enough. And then I get to the point, <laughs> like my whole life, like all I'll go is like, I'll end up being Minnie Mouse or something, something stupid that I can pull <laughs> off Mouse. with materials in my apartment. Right. So we saw Trish over the weekend, whose house is essentially a costume store because yeah. she does a lot of costumes for TikTok, a lot of costumes for OnlyFans. And she was like, like, I just actually had some, I buy like all different sizes and stuff for people I collab with in case we want to role play. <laughs> she had this at home. So she had this <laughs> and I just so decided that I was going to be an OnlyFans star. Yeah. Took the wig it's from only, her. It's only fitting. Took everything. You yeah, know? it's great. And of course, all day yesterday. Put that hair back. Oh gosh. <laughs> Crazy bitch. All day yesterday, I had a mental breakdown of if I was actually going to go through with this, what I was going to do. And I was like, I'm just going to do it with my hairy body. And Shane said, well, no, you have to commit. Like if you're going to do an outfit for Halloween, you have to commit. You got to shave. You got to do body glitter. So here I am, bare boyed. But you bare know. Bare boyed. I honestly like, you look so beautiful that I almost feel like it's your wedding day. Like I can just like a little bit like... <gasps> Like, did just my glam. in awe of you. Such <laughs> Thank a pretty you. boy. I do feel alive as a woman. Like, I feel like I would be such a bitch if I was a girl who regularly got glammed. Yeah. And I feel like I would be one of those girls on Instagram that just is so intolerable. Some snotty bitch. Mm -hmm. God, wouldn't you love that life, though? Just I would. a little bit. Yeah. Do you think you're going to... Do you have Halloween plans? Are you going to go as a troll? I never have Halloween plans. Me either. I was thinking if I wanted to, like, bring this back, I could reboot it and, like, find, like, a circuit board or, like, a what one of those, like, Wi-Fi antennas and I would be, like, an internet troll. Oh, that's pretty fitting. Yeah. 
so we could commentate on yeah, all yeah, the yeah. drama. Yeah. I love fall, but I just, and I love ha- the idea of Halloween, but Halloween night is always kind of a flop for me, kind yeah. of like New Year's Eve. You know, you're always- I never do shit for New Year's so Eve. So hyped up. I mean, and you're better off that way because it yeah. never pans out to be and something that's And it's expensive. It's like dinner's like 150 a plate at a shitty place. <laughs> And it's not like I've ever paid for that, but I've Googled it because I I do have like influencer aspirations. Like I do want to go to catch and like I do want to look cute and like get a spray tan. You want to go get paparazzi at Saddle Ranch and Boa Steakhouse? I mean, if you yeah. want to do that, we could go confront like the TikTok stars that we're going to talk about in today's episode. could you imagine how that would go? What if you and I got in a fist fight with Bryce Hall? He'd be like, who are you? I think we could take him. He's pretty ripped. Like, if we were going to do some Logan Paul shit on this podcast and we were like, 10K to whoever can fight us and beat us, it's like, I do think you and I could molly whop a hoe. I shaved my entire body and dressed <laughs> as a woman today. I don't think I'm taking anyone out. And these boys, I was watching, because I'm not very familiar with TikTok in general. Right. So I was trying to see why these TikTok 20-year-olds are popping, you know? And they were doing their before and after of TikToks where it shows them super, uh, like... Before they got into the social house, the hype house, and what they are now well, after they worked Bryce out is a and sway cranked. boy, you silly See, goose! I can't keep up with get all your of gang these people. culture straight, boo. Well, let it. Let's talk about uh, some TikTok stars later on in the show. But are you ready for some hot topics? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know why, but as a troll, I feel like I need to like rub my tummy, and like I love that you're being slutty, and I'm just like. Ooh. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, if you want to support this show, we're still sponsorless at the moment. But by can, choice. Yeah, by choice. Yeah. You know, we just really want to fill it out for a minute. She's working on herself this mm-hmm. year. But you can support the show by getting my Ryland Adams hoodie, rylandadams.com. It's a T cute teal hoodie. Uh, Again, you could watch full episodes on the Sip Clips on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell. All right. Well, because of Halloween, we had two of our favorite pop stars encountering aliens this week. So I thought, (laughs) why not divulge? Divulge? We'll finish the sentence before we we agree on the use of that word. Into their alien seeing. I think it would be like dive into. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well. we'll Or divulge the details of their alien sightings. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Miley Cyrus. (laughs) I think you're perfect. God love Miley. God love her. Who's been promoting her new album. We've only gotten one single thus far, but I am very excited to see what comes. But anyways, she was talking in an interview about her alien experience, and she had this to say, I was driving through San Bernardino with a friend, Mm -hmm. and I got chased down by some sort of UFO. The best way to describe it is a flying snowplow. It had this big plow in the front of it, and it was glowing yellow. I did see it flying, and my friend saw it too. She also said that she like saw its eyes. And I'm like, um, if it's a flying saucer snowplow, it doesn't have eyes. It's either a machine or an entity. Well, there could be somebody driving the machine. So she saw into the snowplow apparatus and saw the eyes of something within it? She said, quote, it looked me, it looked at me and we made eye contact. And I think that's what really shook me looking into the eyes of something I couldn't quite wrap my head around. Right. And the way that I read that within the context of the article, it really sounded like the snowplow had eyes. And I was like, (laughs) girl, you're high. Like you're lit. And you might even be on something that's like not just weed because you're seeing shit. (laughs) Well, she did say that she was shaken for almost a week after the alleged close encounter and they thought they might go back but she did also note that they bought weed wax from a guy in a van in front Hello. of a taco shop Hello. and it could have been the weed wax it but could have been weed wax my argument though is Miley is no stranger to pot I feel like she has a high tolerance yeah but dabs are different dude like weed wax hits see I don't even know what weed wax is it's a way more mm. insane intake of THC. It's this concentrated shit that looks like earwax, but it's just like heavy THC wax. And you put it into like a crazy pipe and have to use like a flame torch to light it up. And then you go... So she was probably off her rockers and in the middle God, of nowhere... I hope nowhere. they weren't driving on dabs, but like... Well, uh, I don't know. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, Ugh. <laughs> sit down, like watch Aladdin or something. I do <laughs> think that if the aliens are going to come for some reason, I feel like they're going to choose the area that we live, that I live in yeah. right here because there is at the top of the mountain by us, this weird like vortexy tower that is oh, it's just tower. I feel like the government's communicating with the aliens nearby my household. 
And there's been many you times. You don't sound crazy. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> saying that like this specifically. Well, I've never had an alien encounter. And quite frankly, yeah. I mean, an alien. I'm honestly scared shitless of aliens. Well, I guess it could be. An alien can be considered anything from a different planet, correct? We don't really know what an yeah, alien is. Yeah, just an un, uh, not of this earth. An unidentified object. Yeah, or, I think they're calling them different things now, like unidentified apparatus or aircraft or whatever. But there is an interesting, like you saw Unacknowledged on Netflix, right? I've never seen that show. Oh my I've God. I've never even heard of it. You gotta watch Unacknowledged. It scared the shit out of me. But basically this, this, overlying philosophy is like area 51 and like all these other places where they like study and come up with like modern aerodynamics and like weapons of war or like whatever the fuck they're talking about or building at these stations they're all based off of previous existing alien technology so like the idea is that they from found, other planets yeah so the idea is like they found these aircrafts and they're disassembling them to learn how they work and then building their own versions of them. And have they found any uh, well, life they, inside or skeletons? Well, there are like, there are different schools of thought on all of this. So there's this other guy, Bob Lazar, who like worked in one of these factories back in the day. And like, he's been saying like, since he left that factory, he came out publicly, was on the news. It's like this big thing of him saying like, these aircrafts have been on earth for thousands of years. And what's driving them? He's saying that this, like, there's a bunch of different philosophies. Like, they could be sentient beings from another planet that are coming to here now to help us. Or they could be, like, interdimensional, time-warped individuals who are us in, from the future, like, coming back. Like, Some almost like an interstellar type, type of stuff. shit. Yeah. Or they are ancient versions of what we could evolutionarily become. There's like a bunch of different things that I'm not educated enough to speak on. Well, if we should get an expert on the show, like an alien expert yes, one day. We should. Joe's actually been working with an alien team working on an alien documentary. So we have a couple of these guys that we can talk to. And what does your scientist friend think? Have you reached out to him? Josh on is his... such a buzzkill about all of this. But let, to be clear, so I have a friend who works for NASA. He's probably not going to love that I'm plugging <laughs> I have a friend who works for NASA and he's one of the leading scientists on global warming and he's saving all of our lives from global warming. Wow. Yeah, he's a fancy boy. Um, but whenever I bring up things like this, he like rolls his eyes and I'm like, Don't, you're lying to me. But if we're <laughs> trying to get to Mars in our own versions of yeah. spaceships or UFOs for yeah. whatever life exists on Mars, why wouldn't they be trying to get to us as well? Exactly. And I also think that it's in, like super close minded to believe that it that only beings like human beings that require oxygen and water to survive and like are these specific compounds of chemicals are the only kinds of individuals that can exist like that's pretty close-minded demi lovato recently spent a few days in joshua tree and this was right around the same time miley came out with her whole alien experience she was hanging out with her friends and dr stephen greer whose instagram bio claims that he's one of the world's foremost authorities on the subject of ufos et intelligence and and initiating peaceful contact with ET civilians. So <laughs> I'm actually Googling him because this <sighs> is the guy from Unacknowledged, actually. Oh, really? So yeah. he might be legit. Shit, he is legit. I actually didn't read his name in the article. And now I'm kind of shook and I feel bad that I've been calling it a pyramid scheme. I mean, it still might be. I can't believe that. The way you that, describe the thing. The way that a lot of this went down was really weird because Lovato and Greer are encouraging just 1% of the world's population to meditate and make contact with aliens so that governments would have to acknowledge the truth about extra terrestrial life among us so demi posted a series of photos about this and then urged her fans to buy greer's ce5 app which costs ten dollars a, a session right a session or a month and and that's why i felt like this was like a multi-level marketing scheme where it because Lovato like plugged like you have to do it a few times and be patient because it'll eventually work but it's like a few times can add up to fifty dollars yeah she said just keep trying it took me several sessions to tap into deep enough level of meditation to make contact happy communicating so like maybe on halloween this is what you and i should do i mean i'm down if you're paying down, i'm not gonna it's waste $10. money on it 
I mean, I'm, I'm not saying ten dollars is nothing. And but I accidentally like, bought three of these wigs because I didn't look at the delivery dates on them. So I'm like fifty bucks out on stupid troll wigs for no reason. You can now. return stuff on Amazon. I'm never going. I to. think you can even go to Whole Foods now because Whole Foods owns Amazon, and you can return your shit at some Whole Foods for real. I think so. Okay. So I think this is something we should explore. I'm down. And report back. I'm down. It does seem a little sketchy. I guess if you have an interest yeah, in I aliens am... and this guy that's an expert and it hits you up, why yeah. would you say no? I mean, I am a little bit shook that it's that guy. That's the guy from Unacknowledged where I got like the deepest value of information of this on. But I am legit very afraid of aliens. So Joe always has to convince. Why? Why do you think they're trying to harm you? They probably just want to make contact. I don't know that they're trying to harm me, but it's just like anything that is like inexplicable or different or weird about life. I'm just like, oh, no, I'm I've, such a vulnerable, tiny fleck of humanity floating in this space and something's going to come get me. I don't like thinking that there's an entity watching me. Like, even though I know the government's watching me on my phone and, like, tracks everything I say, like, I don't like the fact that there could be, like, a lanky, looming figure over my bed every night just, like, studying me. I feel like there's, what, 8 billion people on the planet? Yeah. I'd be crazy to believe that I'm the one the aliens are trying to touch down and Look communicate with. They're trying with. to touch down on you, for <laughs> sure. I mean, I would accept it if they have something nice to say. You would nice accept it if they have something nice to say? Or if they want to just... What if... I mean, it could be a scary experience, but what a great story. I mean, we're only on the planet once. Why Dude, wouldn't we I don't we know if I could handle it. I'm so scared. Like, <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm like, I can't. I know. I wanted to do something very Halloween-y for the Halloween I mean, episode working, of the podcast. I'm all worked up and scared Really, right you're now. scared. I wish we hadn't talked the about it. The only thing I could think of is what every other podcast does, which is like, rate your favorite Halloween candy. <laughs> <laughs> which, I mean, I'm not against. It's like I have one favorite Halloween candy. <laughs> what is it? Fun Dip. Is that even Halloween candy? Yeah, if you get lucky and you go to a good house, they'll give you like either the full strip of Fun Dip flavors, but it's like you really only need to eat the stick and the blue raspberry green apple sl like slice See, up. See, and like I think with Halloween candy, it's just regular candy. There's very few Halloween themed candy. Right. It just is Halloween packaging unless we're speaking of candy corn. Which is gross. What? You know it's gross. I like candy corns. You're I can't, broken. I can't mess with like the pumpkins. That's like yeah, too, too dense. Far. Too dense. But the skinny corns. You mm. have some in the kitchen, right? Yeah. Ew. I'll slurp a couple of those up. I might not... try one just so I can like reevaluate how much I hate them. But those are fucking gross, babe. Yeah, you should give it a Haiti. A Haiti? Report back. <laughs> 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 okay, so Kelly Osborne, which I kind of live for Kelly Osborne. I've yeah. always had a liking for her. She was spotted out with 20-year-old TikTok star Griffin Johnson, who you know a lot more about TikTok than me, but he's yeah. just one of those like ripped meaty boys that like waves his dick around. I don't know that around. he's meaty, and I think the technical term is dick wiggler. Oh my God, there's a term? I think it's dick wiggler. I might be making that up. I learned this from somebody else, well, and they might just be making fun of me for giving a shit about TikTok, huh? so don't repeat that. But I think everyone we're making a thing. right now gives a shit about TikTok, though. Like, I think yeah. I'm the minority. I think most people are... <laughs> I don't know if that's true because one of my favorite things about the Bryce Hall like BuzzFeed article is like the people who reported they were like I didn't know this kid was famous like I didn't know what this kid did or was or whatever. Yeah, but and that's the thing like people make fun of it, but they're also more famous than like every traditional celebrity at the moment at amongst the moment. a certain demographic. demographic. Yeah. So, but Griffin. <laughs> used to date Dixie. Used to date Dixie. Dixie Amelia. claimed he cheated on her. Um, She's not wrong about that. How do you know? Because she posted receipts. So Griffin <gasps> did some shady bitch shit where Griffin was like, I ain't never cheated on you, girl. Like, did a whole song and he called it, what is that stuff that you guys do on YouTube where you make like nasty songs? Diss about tracks. He made a diss track to Dixie about how he never cheated after they broke <sighs> up. And then Dixie used that audio on a TikTok. Why do I know this? God damn it, I'm 30. <sighs> and she posted the receipt, so we know that Griffin's a cheater for real, for real. I want to put a poll out to know if the people that listen to this show want us to talk about TikTok news, because I guess I could become involved if that's what the people want to hear about. I mean, I'm as involved as anybody could be. <laughs> and you you i you go outside of your niche on tiktok and yeah. you mess with like the populars the addison oh, the bryce hate watch chase hudson i hate that i know his name but i do Lil okay Huddy, so represent. griffin johnson 20 year old mm -hmm. was out with kelly osborne got a lot of attention a lot of headlines 
he claims following all of this that he she's mentoring him. I think you forgot to say that the tabloids are saying they're dating. That's yeah. the attention. Yeah. They're but they're not dating. So then why are they hanging out? Because he wants to be a host. But and what she's is like, she hosting right now? She's just mentoring, mentoring. She's mentoring. How do you say mentoring? She's mentoring. She's his Why men- am I saying mentor? <laughs> she's acting as his mentor. <laughs> his mentor. <laughs> I mean, I, I would find it hard to believe if there wasn't a little. They were really playing I it up. I would find it hard to believe if she was interested in a 20-year-old <laughs> dick wiggler. Kelly's hardcore. She's fucking <laughs> awesome. She's one of the Osbournes. I've met the family. I don't think they'd accept a TikToker in their house, though they are very kind and they're very accepting so i bet they would accept anybody in their house i like your little humble brag was <laughs> kelly there when you went to the osborne but, household no kelly wasn't there but i, I love kelly and i wish she would the suit is so slippery <laughs> i'm like slipping out of the seat every five and seconds. i'm not digging on kelly osborne being like what is her job because yeah. I, I love when she was on the fashion police yeah. and when she's hosting stuff i really do enjoy her presence but it must be one of those addison ray courtney kardashian relationships where maybe he loves that she's old school hollywood yeah. and wants some Something out of that and she's like well you're really famous so why would i say no mm-hmm. but she stepped out 85 pounds down i mean she she's owning good. it i feel bad typically commenting on anyone's weight but yeah. she's like on a p- kind of press tour about it she got the gastric sleeve she looks great she feels confident she's yeah. having fun and she's hanging out with tiktok stars so good for her whatever's clever speaking of tiktok stars bryce hall who is griffin johnson's friend griffin was dating kelly they're both sway boys See the houses. There's Sway Boys. There's Hype House. So everyone's just circling back on what Jake Paul started. Yeah. And the guy that started the Hype House came from Team 10. Oh, my gosh. So it is. It's the same business plan. So Bryce Hall, who I discovered today, who was dating Addison Rae at a point. (laughs) I mean, I did. I looked at his TikTok for the first time today and I was like, I get it. Dick you wiggler. get it? I get you, Dick Wiggler. I don't get him. I don't get the Dick Wiggler. Well, no, it's not for me, but yeah. I understand that, like, why 14 million people followed him and oh, want to see I him don't. wiggle his dick, I guess. God. So, anyways, this is the same man that was, like, made headlines for having insane corona virus parties. Yeah, this is the guy that the mayor of LA was like, we're shutting your power and your water down. Like, but they actually did it, right? Yeah, And they're God. facing $2,000 in fines, which doesn't seem like a lot compared to... Doesn't seem to, like enough. But they're also facing up to one year in jail. Like, those things yeah, don't... get pay the time. Those don't even out to me, though. Like, $2,000 or one year in jail, or yeah. even both. It's like, mm, mm, what? I'd love it if it was both. Anyways, this Bryce Hall man, he got in a fight while dining out <laughs> at an LA restaurant. They kindly asked him to stop vaping. He said he wasn't, he was vaping, but he stopped when he was asked. Right. But it's like, you should not be vaping in a fucking restaurant. It was outside. I don't know the rules. You're legally, you're not allowed to vape at a restaurant, at a bar, anywhere. Oh, see. And I, and there are some streets in California where you can't even smoke on the street. Like in Burbank, I can't smoke out there. Wow. I I mean, I love that. I'm sure you do. (laughs) So anyways, <laughs> Bryce Hall claimed that the restaurant told him to leave and he was fine with leaving. He says, no. he says, that's what he said, no. but he says they would not give him his credit card back, which is, they will. Th- that's the thing. They're going to give you your credit card back. You crazy bitch. I Come think back. what happened is he, they asked him to leave, but yeah. he put his card down for the table. Exactly. I don't think everyone was leaving and they still needed the card down a card down to for the pay. table. So yeah. they probably needed to exchange a card. But I don't know how like that escalates to a fist fight. Like I've had a tip. The way it escalated to a fist fight is that Bryce was not going to leave. And so the manager was like, I will drag your punk ass out of this establishment. So technically the manager did put hands on him first. But I will say that the way Bryce Hall was dressed, he was asking for those hands. And th- the thing is, <laughs> Money and fame at a young age doesn't do well for anyone. And this kid's like, this is like the third time he's been arrested or dealing with the police this year. Like he was arrested in Texas during quarantine when he decided to go on a road trip and throw a string of parties in other cities and other states without masks, with strangers, like... And I'm not... I'm not excusing any of this behavior, but I think it's a tell as old as time. Like Justin Bieber was this 
yeah. five years ago, yeah. egging his neighbors' houses and yeah. drag racing down his streets in Calabasas. And I was the same. I was a, I was start inciting riots, literally jumping over couches, burning in the streets of Chico. The difference is you don't have paparazzi following exactly. you. You don't have millions of kids that yeah. you're influencing during a world global pandemic yeah. where he, they're not wearing masks. They're acting as if nothing's yeah. going wrong. But they are, I think you start to feel invisible when you're 20 years old with millions of dollars and a bunch invincible. of yes. Invincible. What, how do you say it? Invincible. Invisible. Invincible. In you're right. <laughs> invisible means no one can see you, you pretty baby girl. You in this round. <laughs> You, I just wanted to make sure you meant not no, you didn't I, mean invisible. I appreciate you should yeah. call me out every time that I do say a word. I don't wrong. I don't catch it all the time. They do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. You won't even look at them. You won't even look at them. They do. Well, they're mad at me at the moment. And oh, I'm not gonna be that person girl. that starts addressing comments all the time, but you know. Are we gonna move on to the comment section? Of our I would, comment section? I just want to say one thing. Okay, go, go and off, it's, sis. And it's not that it's a popular opinion, but I have seen that some people believe I am bisexual based off of the way that I sit. And I see that you're. it's affecting you because you're sitting no, different today. I'm sitting different today because of the bodysuit, and I want my <laughs> belly button to show on camera because this shit is so cute. But I was so confused by the comment because I'm just like, the fuck does that mean? Like, how do bisexuals sit different? And then this weekend, I was with a friend of mine who identifies as bisexual, and I was like, hey, I got a quick question. Like, how's a bisexual sit? <laughs> you couldn't ask me how a gay man sits and have me give you a definitive answer because I don't know. Well, the funny thing is, is this girl was like, I mean, they sit with like their legs up or like they sit in a funky manner. Like she literally described the way I sit and I was like, no shit. <laughs> I sit like a bisexual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. I'm not. And not that there's a problem with it. It's just. My problem with the comment section was everyone was getting mad that I was like, overtaking the sh the show and being mean to you and i will say like i'm i come from a background of producing entertainment news shows so i like things to be speedy jumpy yeah. fast and it, i love that about and you and we're moving but i understand that when i was like you didn't say your name fast enough people were like <laughs> you're really bossing her around or not uh, but i don't think talk. but i never feel bossed around by you i just like it that makes me giggle because like that is so <clears throat> indicative of who the fuck you are like it's just like and I, that's who i love so like, now you're validating to everyone Everyone, that that's just me. Somebody help me. Somebody come get me. Help me. Rylan's bossing me around. It doesn't feel good here. I just want to be my authentic self. Twice. And then a lot of people were just saying that it's like feels a little bit censored. And like, yeah, yeah I'm sorry if I'm not fully uncensored yet after just going through like the biggest internet cancellation <laughs> in the history of the I world. I love how fucking bold you feel in this look. He's just like, and let me tell you. <laughs> because Flips I was, I was hair. like, a, like I, even when you were talking, like just hinting that the D'Amelios are kind of boring. I was like, Gen yeah. Z's gonna attack you, but I Which, guess. And Gen Z identified. They They're, did. Yeah. I, well, and I think fucking wait for it. <laughs> Charlie D'Amelio put out an ASMR video on it on YouTube and said it's going to be a recurring segment that she does. Which you take so credit Char for. Yes, of course I take credit for I, that. Can I be honest? <laughs> she didn't. I don't this. even remember. <laughs> of course she didn't A, see this. And B, I don't remember you saying that. But I straight up started whispering, but I started whispering so softly that I don't think you could hear me whispering in your headphones. But if right. you play back the tape, play back the tape. Like they have opinions. I don't know. Like for me personally, it's like, like, this whisper talking thing like have an asmr channel this was my idea and when i did say you stop yelling it's because it's loud as fucking in my ears. ears you guys got to hear the mixed version and in my ears it was like startling so yeah. i wasn't like being angry at you i never felt that way you don't have to explain yourself to me baby <laughs> okay i'm just explaining and <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm just explaining it to the thousands of strangers who think i'm abusing you <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> okay, well, did you catch any of Kanye West on Joe Rogan's podcast? Uh, three, almost three hours long. I watched the clips because I could yeah. not commit to three hours. Joe watched it in like double time. Oh. And sped through it. And did he come back to you and say He was anything? just like, it's a trip. Like, it is a <laughs> trip. It is so entertaining. Like, I'm down with it. Like, I don't hate Kanye. Like, everyone hates Kanye. No, I think Kanye is highly entertaining. I think the problem for a lot of people is when he's running for president, which he revealed on the God show. God wants he was this for him. Inspired by God. Yeah. To be the leader of the free world. And yeah. I. Even Joe Rogan had to pause. And I swear to God, he was just thinking like, is this man fucking with us or what's going on? He's not fucking with anyone. He's 
bipolar and not on meds. I mean, I'm not 100% familiar with how being bipolar works, but I mean, it sounds a little been... manic for him to believe that God wants him to be the leader of the free world. Well, yeah, and he said the idea for him to run for president came to him in the shower. Through God <laughs> in the shower. I will also say this. When I was 19, I had 10 vodka Red Bulls and emailed my dad that I thought I was the second coming of Christ. So there are crazy ideas that just come to us when we're mentally unstable. Yeah, but didn't you wake up the next day and be like, maybe not. This has been like six months now. No, I still feel like I was put on this earth for a reason. (laughs) (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) Well, a lot of people like Jennifer Aniston are saying it's not funny in her Instagram post about voting. And then you have the opposite side of the spectrum where Kourtney Kardashian's just proudly rocking a vote Kanye hat in her social media posts, which inspired a whole bunch of backlash. I mean, yeah, I think in this day and age, politics are a hot button issue and like identifying a certain way is tantamount to being like a monster well, like a soulful mess it's the most infuriating i think because it's so polarizing right yeah. now and then kanye obviously isn't going to win so he's yeah. just splitting the vote no matter where you lie is he even on the ballot i don't even think he made it on the ballot not he didn't in even... a lot of places he did yeah. an instagram tutorial of how to <laughs> write his name in, in on the state yeah that he wasn't eligible for well he announced it too late in the game he didn't have the signatures on the survey or whatever the fuck to get yourself on a ballot like he didn't have a coherent party like oh, well that's why i think had he wanted not, to give this a real shot for the merch though like he, if i could wear the merch and not be an asshole about it i would like when he's not you should get some now so it's vintage when he's not the president shit and then you <laughs> but if i buy it now it's supporting his campaign and i don't know if i can do that in good conscience right move on to kim kardashian who's kim K. 40th birthday was so cute happened recently so cute one of her friends i don't know why this is the stick out moment for me but one of her friends uh, got her a kimopoly board yeah. where it's like monopoly but customized but kim for kim and yeah. all of the pieces are things that just are influential in her yeah, own life yeah she's got like a cell phone a lipstick and all a, of yeah the like hotels that you can buy or her old street addresses and stuff which, which is pretty cute it's like but i also hate monopoly so fucking much that i feel like that might be a passive aggressive gift where she's like let's play this because i feel like anybody who plays a game Monopoly all the way through with someone never fucking talks to that person again. Yeah, every time I play Monopoly, it does not end well. The last time was last New Year's Eve and Shane literally walked away from the game. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, Monopoly is the most enraging fucking fight inciting thing in the world. Yeah, he was just like, I don't want to hate you, so I'm going to walk away. (laughs) And that's like a recurring theme for me. A game night is when I'm at my personal worst because I don't think I'm very competitive as a person in general, but start a game of Mafia start a game dude we should have a game night i love mafia well i don't know we might not come back i think it might be the funniest thing no i'll come back because i'm ruthless like the first time i played mafia with shane i he was so scared of me because i was lying to him so adamantly yeah because i wanted to win yeah and i'm always known to be the one that stands on tables or offers to do your laundry for a week if i'm wrong even if i'm wrong just because i want to win yeah and i even in sorry, I end up like throwing the board or taking it so that's personal. A bit, that's a bit far. But as soon as the game's over, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, right. No, you I am. seem really. I, I just need to throw the table over and then everything's fine. I let it like, go. Like, I feel like it's a space where I can get angry oh and then let God. it go. Play with your hair. Like, <laughs> oh, I can't. If you're kicking <laughs> shit over and throwing fucking game boards, there's a problem, baby girl. If you had a customized game, what would it be? Would you want one? God, Clue. Oh, I never make it through Clue. Oh, I love Clue. I get a little bored for some reason. You got to start lying. <laughs> you got to lie through the game. It makes it so much more interesting because, like, if you're not lying in Clue, you're playing it wrong and it's the most boring shit in the world. Like, <laughs> You got to start like fucking with people's heads. Like, you know what you have in your hand. You got to start asking people if they have the cards you have in your hand. So it's like you're inceptioning them to think that you don't have those cards in your hand, but you do. So then that motherfucker is going to look like an idiot in front of everyone when they guess it's the candlestick. But really, you've got the candlestick. So you're just as crazy as me when it comes to Yeah, I really want to play with you now. I didn't know you were this way. (laughs) Oh. 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 (laughs) Oh. If you want to have a fun Halloween. Hey. (laughs) Okay. Let's talk to aliens and throw some board games at each other. Oh, my God. Let's do that. Speaking of the Kardashians, uh, Rob Kardashian, you remember his sock line, right? I do. 
Well, it's still thriving. I checked the other day. I mean, I don't know how, if it's making money, but it's it still exists. up. It exists. Yeah. They're still shipping. Good for them. You can still purchase, but now his most recent endeavor is hot sauce. He's launching a hot sauce line. Yeah. I'm. Uh, yep, that's all I had to say. I mean, everybody's got a hot sauce line. I feel like a hot sauce line is to everybody as LA is to club promoters. Like, and most club promoters also have a hot sauce line. Fuck, I'm going to Panera after this. I'm hungry. Not that this is important. Mm -hmm. And not that I need to make this about me, but I do have a great Migo story. What? I met. Oh, shit. You don't even know which one of them you met? No, I know which one I met. Okay, I just remembered who it was. So we'll, we can edit that down so I don't look silly. <laughs> but not that I need to make this about me. Uh-huh. I did meet... Oh my God, I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Quavo from the Migos. Uh-huh. So Quavo ac uh, actually executive produced this movie I worked on. And it was a low budget thing. Like we were shooting actually at my friend's apartment and we had no director's chairs because there was no room for them. And like, it was such a tiny tight space that we had to put all the camera equipment in the bedroom. And then we had to sit on the camera equipment crates. Mm -hmm. So he comes to set and he's like, I want to sit at the monitor. And I was like, it's in this bedroom and you can sit on this crate next to me. And I had like a coffee cup with me. And he's like, I'm going to need my blunt. So he's smoking a blunt and he and I are sitting on this camera case next to each other looking at this monitor. And he's like, where do I ash this? And I was like, in my coffee. Sir. No. I swear to God, I was so honored to have Quavo ash in my coffee. It was pathetic. You should have sold it on eBay. <laughs> I thought about it. I honestly was just being super cool because I wanted to be like, can I try your ice on? Like, is it a bit much of an ask for me to try that necklace on? And his security <laughs> guards were like, back the fuck up. You crazy did not bitch. actually. Of course I asked that. I have no boundaries. Have yeah, you met me? That speaks exactly to who Lizzie is as a person. <laughs> Which is a why this rapper shut me down. who's wearing probably a $50,000 necklace. I just wanted to try it on. I, I was like, whose dick do I have to suck to get ice like that? Like, probably his. I don't know that I could fit it. <laughs> I don't know that I would even try. I'm spoken for. I love my mans and I'm not trying to stuck any strange dick for any strange purpose. But like, <sighs> oh. as the saying goes, whose dick do I have to suck to get some <laughs> ice like that? Lastly, Justin Bieber, I guess, is picking up his, <gasps> yes, YouTube, his YouTube originals. Yes. So instead of a series this time, because he had Seasons, right. which was in promotion of his album, where he kind of documented the process of him creating his last album. And now this looks to be uh, maybe a one-off, one like maybe hour-long documentary. Whatever, I'll take it. Just about how he is in the state of his healthy mind right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, I like it. And I like his two new singles. I like yeah. where he's headed. I think I like this better than his Seasons era, which was just the previous one. It just seems so authentic and genuinely benevolent for lack of a better word like this guy's just promoting some good nice stuff right now and i really like that yeah but it's still kind of edgy like holy like that hits for me i love that but i'm happy that he's happy i'm happy he's found his way after living such a public uh tumultuous i mean tumultuous tumultuous yeah i don't know that like, word either but i do think it's hard for a child star and the fact that he's come out of it and is just like talented and making bops and like alive and doing well alive. and yeah finding god instead of crack like good for him yeah all right you guys well i think that's gonna do it for today's Halloween episode of The Sip. Yeah, mama's got to use the potty. <laughs> I got to pee so bad. My tummy hurts. Um, I did want to have us <laughs> read some well. of the reviews again because they've just been so fun to read and it helps the podcast so much, especially on Apple Podcasts when you rate and review the show. Lizzie, did you screenshot some? I screenshotted my favorite. Do I have <laughs> lipstick on my fucking teeth? I can't see I'm that gonna far. be so mad if I had lipstick Girl, this I whole episode. Girl, I can't see that far. You look gorgeous okay. when you're blurry. All right, what's the best? And now they're gonna say, I'm being mean to you. <laughs> I'm demanding. <laughs> Somebody help me. <laughs> so my favorite review is from D Paca. All right. And I'm probably saying that wrong and I'm so sorry, sir. It's not you, it's me or lady. It's all me. I'm the problem. This review is titled L period I period Z period Z period E. Just read the review. Period. Five star review. I have never identified with anyone more than L. Gordon, period. So real. So amazing. I like that she took it upon herself or himself to give you a nickname. L. Gordon. L. Gordon. Yeah. yeah, I do love that for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have one more. Do you want me to read it or yep. do you want to read it? You read okay. it. This is a funny username. <laughs> 
from Shaney. Oh, baby. I always get so excited. Five stars. I honestly had no idea what to expect when you said you were starting this podcast, period. It's my favorite thing to listen to. I always have to listen all the way through because of how good it is. See, I think period. this is condescending your tone. Do you really? Uh-huh. Wow, this might be why a lot of people hate me because I'm super unaware of it. I love it and can't wait for more. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Thank you guys so much for rating and reviewing our show. I genuinely do appreciate it and I appreciate the support on the podcast overall. It's been overwhelming and so appreciated. Um, thank you so much for watching this. Our Halloween set will be gone next week. If Watch you want to keep up with us, uh, we're on YouTube at The Sip Clips at The Sip Official on Instagram. You can follow us both individually on Instagram as well. We appreciate you. Love you very much. Have a safe and happy Halloween. Goodbye. Get me out of this suit. I'm so fucking serious. We have to do And That's The Sip. Oh, and that's The Sip. For real though. <laughs> like, I'm in so much pain. I need you to get me out of it. <laughs>